Okay, guys, I think we are good to go. So hello, everyone. How are you? This is your girl, Genesis, and we're back for another boss builder training. Um, I have a little bit of time before I do a coaching session um, a little bit later. And so I wanted to discuss and pick out uh, a question from the Boss Builder inquiry form. So when people sign up for Boss Builder, which is absolutely free, um, you are going to get, uh, of course, access to my two-day training, which a lot of you have taken. However, um, there were many questions, and a lot of you guys know the Boss Builder Workbook. It released uh, yesterday. Um, there are only a few left, so if you haven't gotten yours and you are a Boss Builder, please get yours. You can only get access to the workbook if you've signed up for the training because I don't want anyone to do the workbook and you have not watched the training. It's vital that you've seen at least the trainings. So I'm picking out – good morning, guys. How are you? Good morning, Geneva. I'm picking out questions. Uh, questions that you guys have submitted. I've gotten over 500 questions, um, literally. So there are a lot of things that people are wondering. Now, I've answered 30, 30, the biggest ones I've answered in the workbook. So if you purchase the workbook, then you're going to get uh, 30 major questions answered. And I literally are answering them. Um, you know, I put the question at the top and then I'm literally answering them in the book. Hello, Nikita. Hello, Shayna, guys. How are you? So guys, if you have experienced my boss book, training, I want you to just jump in the comments and just say, I've taken boss, but, or I'm a, you know, I'm a boss builder. I just want people to see, um, on how many people have taken this training. I know this is a pop-up live, so it's not as if, you know, I'm going to have all of the people who've taken this, but if you have taken boss builder, I just want you to either show an emoji, tell people, Hey, I'm a boss, I'm an official boss builder because this training has definitely revolutionized a lot of people, um, and their mindset on on how to build their tribes, on how to show up with their own products. Um, all of the things that we're talking about in these boss builder trainings are where people are building up their tribes. But a lot of you guys still have many questions because it's not as if I can contain or even put together all of your things in one video, right? It's, it's even in the two-day training. So over the course of time, I'm working on, on some things on my website where um, as boss builders, you're going to get access to some amazing things things to help build your tribe. But I want to show forth some, um, some help, more helping you guys even more with, um, helping you guys build your tribe. So today I picked out a question. Actually, this is from someone who just signed up for Boss Builder. Boss Builder actually is now accessible for the public. So if you go to jensisdorsey.com backslash boss, you can now, um, you know, get access. So if you have friends who need to watch this, who need to sign up, um, here's what I'm encouraging you to do. Shoot them the link, jensisdorsey.com backslash boss, uh, because it's going to help me get to know what they need and things like that. So today I picked a question from the hat. The question is, how do I make consistent sales uh, with my services even after charging my pricing and providing a service that is absolutely necessary? So this is someone who had, again, recently signed up. And when you sign up for Boss Builder, I ask you, what are some things you're struggling with? This helps me figure out what I need to provide for you um, as we're building up this movement, right? So with this question, this person is struggling to, I'm going to kind of hyper, I'm going to kind of pair paraphrase the direct um, input, but she says, currently I struggle to properly market legal services and I feel like it's tough to, sh to tough to sugarcoat services that are absolutely needed. I also find myself struggling to make consistent sales, although I've modified my pricing several times. Now, this is a great question. Okay. This is a great, 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 great question. So what she's saying is I have the thing. I got the knowledge. I got it. But people aren't biting. And I've changed my pricing. I've changed my pricing several times. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't sugarcoat what I'm doing. Right. So I am here, but she's in the legal services area. So she, again, she's finding it really hard to have consistent sales. So what we're going to do is we're going to take her question and we're going to use my mind, my brain, and my strategy to give out an answer for this. Hopefully this will help you. Again, we're going to be doing these a lot more. Uh, maybe not too much, but you know, one, maybe one to 
one or two every month um, to show you guys on how to do this thing, right? Um, a lot of you guys who follow me, um, you know, you guys are saying, you know, Genesis, I, I need somebody who can keep me on this thing. And so I'm really excited because hopefully this is going to help a lot of you guys get in here and win it, okay? It's possible to make money doing what you love, but you got to figure out how to monetize that thing. If you don't know how to monetize it, you'll never make money from it, okay? So you can have all the knowledge, all the expertise, but you need strategy at the end of the day. And that's what I provide. So whether you sign up for my coaching, whether you just follow me, I promise you that I'm going to give you value. That is what I provide. So as many of you guys know, if you've watched any of my previous boss builders, you already know what we're going to use. I got my virtual whiteboard and I have my Wacom uh, tablet. And so I'm going to just begin writing on this tablet. I have a digital pen. So um, this is going to be interesting. Uh, many of you who have watched my previous trainings, you know that I'm getting better and better <laughs> with using this device. So it is it's definitely a process. So we're going to get started today. Again, our main thing that we're looking at um, is sales. Okay, sales. She's struggling with the sales. That's what she's struggling with. Okay, I just want to make sure that you guys can see that as it pops up. Um, hey, 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 Miss Wilbin, how are you? <coughs> Hello, Nikita. How are you? So she is struggling with sales. Okay. I'm glad that you guys can see that. Now we are ready to get started. If you haven't shared this and you have some business friends who would need this, definitely be sure to share. Don't be stingy with the information. So, uh, we're looking at sales today. She's struggling. Now, the first thing, one of the things that we harped on heavily. Okay, people, we know this. If you've been in Boss Builder, then you know there's one thing that I have talked about heavily. And if you don't know it, then let's talk about it. We talk about what is your one thing, right? Now, before we get into sales, okay, because sales is the, the it's the end result of the first thing, okay, which is what is that one thing, okay? Now, I don't have a lot of background on this question, okay? Um, again, I don't know whether, you know, some people are... Let me uh, turn this up. I'm not sure whether, you know, um, you know, if there's any extra layers with what she's doing. I um, mean, guys, let me know if you're losing audio. Hopefully you're not. But, you know, I'm not sure if there's extra layers to what she's doing. OK, so I can only provide based upon what I would give in a generic answer. Right. So there may be some layers going on. I'm not aware of. So I just want to keep that in mind as we're doing this. OK, now let me make sure I can turn this up and you guys can. OK, I can hear myself. OK, good. So. The problem with most people um, when it comes to while, why are they struggling in consistent sales? Okay, in other words, you are, you're pushing this out, but you're not having consistent income coming in. Usually, the first thing I always look at is, is there a conflict in identity? We talked about this in Boss Builder Training. And if you haven't watched the two-day training, you're going to need to watch that because you're going to need to get some background, okay? But one of the things we touched on was this. Is there a conflict in your identity? Many times people don't make sales because of one major, major thing. You still are offering too many things that are not synced together. So if you offer legal services, the first thing I'm going to ask you is, is that the only thing that you're offering? Okay. Because in certain industries, you can't, you don't have the grace to hip hop. Okay. To go, oh, well, I do this and I do a little bit of this and I do a little bit of that. Right. The major thing you got to realize, especially in those types of services in the healthcare industry, um, in law, those kind of things, you have to stick to that. You can't be the person who, you know, sells, you know, you, you do relate, um, I'll give a perfect example. You know, you do marriage advice and you're the doctor, right? I mean, it, it, you can kind of work it, but unless you're a relationship doctor, you know, and, and here's the thing, here's the, here's the biggest thing too especially when you're building up an audience, okay? It's something you got to realize. Because you're building up, you need to focus, right? People, a lot of people, when they get started in businesses, I don't know why, but they feel like they have the luxury to do it all, okay? Because you feel like no one knows you. But it's actually the opposite. 
Because no one knows you, you cannot afford to be everywhere at all times. Because this is the this is the um this is the moment where you're building up people getting to know you, right? So the biggest thing I would first say is make sure there's not a conflict in identity. This goes for a lot of you who you have different coaching programs and they're all over the place. You know, you have different services and none of them sync together. You need to go back and figure out. Am I confusing people? Okay, that's the first thing that we're going to look at. The second thing is with that one thing, when when people are shopping or people are going to your website or purchasing something, okay, does your website clearly explain what you do? Okay, because there's, there's a, we're going to make our way over to sales. We're going to get over to sales, but we got to first look at a couple things first. In your website, um, on social media, okay, the one thing is so important. I cannot stress this because the thing about that one thing is that it controls all of your content that's coming out. Okay. Yes, Nicole, I'm telling you, you got your ghost followers confused. It controls all of your content coming out. So if I'm all over the place, then my content, my lives, my, they're, they're, they're like so many different stuff. And so people, it's funny. We, we think that if we offer different things and we'll attract different people, right? And that's, that's the logic that some people think is strategy, but it's not strategy. It's not, it's not, it's not strategy. You may think it's strategy, but it's not strategy whatsoever. Okay. Cause see, you're thinking, okay, well, if I, if I'm like this to all people, then I'm going to attract people, you know, no. Um, when you're all things to all people, I mean, that's great when it comes to evangelism and winning souls, but when it comes to sales, um, you're going to confuse people because they're coming to you for one thing and then you're out here doing five other things. They're like, wait, well, well, when are you going to feed me? Well, when are you going to be helping me? Right. And you don't want to neglect your tribe. That's, that's the biggest thing. You never want to neglect the tribe. So you, so, so the most, so the more focused it is, the easier it is to feed the people. Right. But if you're offering like 1500 different things, Someone may come for one of those things and you never give any help or advice for the other things, you know, till kingdom come. People are going to leave you. So you have to make sure that there is not a conflict in your identity. I suffered with this when I first got started and really it was kind of infusing through until like now. Now it is clear and cut through what I do. It's extremely clear. What I'm telling people is don't make the same mistake I did where I was still trying to get all sorts of people, but I never clearly defined what I did. And I, I, I'm telling you, I could do a whole webinar on the one thing. I, re I really could. Because when I look at people, they still aren't defined, right? So you may say, okay, well, I help people, I help people build their businesses. Well, that's great. But what exactly about building their businesses do you do? Right. Because when they get in that thing, I, you know, I may find out that really your strong suit is in, you know, accountability. It's not really in business. Right. It's not really in, you know, helping people form their businesses. Right. Um, Another example is, you know, you may say, well, you know what? I'm really good at encouraging people. Well, when I work with my clients, I tell them that's great, but that's not a one thing. That's it's too broad. What is it that you do when encouraging people? What is your specific area in which you do? The more specific you are, the higher you can charge, the more you can target, right? And I'm not, and I'm not telling you that you need to be super, 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 super specific. But the reason why some of you are not clicking is because you're not specific enough. So when you pitch yourself to people, they can go to 1,500 other people because you all do the same thing. But if people are, like, for, I'll give a perfect example, people come to me because I'm focusing on helping people build their communities, right? So this is within the business. Within people building their business and building their ministries, I specialize in people building their communities. So you're not going to come to me for general branding advice. I mean, I can give you branding advice, awesome, but at the end of the day, I bring branding and marketing together for you to build your community. If you are not building your community, you're not focused on that, then you don't come to me, right? So I specialize in that. What do you specialize in? And do these two things reflect that? Or are you still over the place? Stop allowing fear to make you think that if I specialize, I won't make money. 
If you don't specialize, you won't make money, okay? If you do specialize, you'll make much more money and it'll be easier to convert for sales because the people who are coming in, they already know what you do and they know that you're good at it and they're willing to come to you and, and they're willing to give you their money, okay? So my first question is, again, kind of going back, is that one thing clear enough? Do we have our hands on that or are we still a little bit all over the place? Okay, so if, you're, if you've been in Boss Builder, you already know some of this, but we're going to keep on going and hopefully you can draw some more things. So after looking at your website, social media, in your website, okay, here, um, you want to make sure that your offerings, okay, are easy to understand and make sure that there's nothing in your offerings that should not be there. Kind of like which you know what what thing is quite not like the others. Whatever is not whatever should not be there. Whatever you put up there because you were just desperate for some coins, take it off. I, I tell people all the time. I don't care how long it took you to come up with it. Take it off of your site. Okay, take it off your site. Take I don't care what pitch, I don't care what program. If it does not relate to the audience in which you're serving anymore, you can recycle that content for some other things, for some opt-ins, for some landing pages to gain more emails. But at this point, you need to take it off, okay? You also need to make sure that the descriptions are clear. You know, some people, when I go to their site and they explain to me, you know, what's included in an hour coaching or what's included in this service, it's not really clear and I have to ask a lot of questions. What I tell people is get some, get some people who've never been to your site before and have them do a mock sign up or have them do like a mock, you know, going through your site, right? And if they have a lot of questions from just reading your descriptions for what you offer, it probably is not good enough. So, you know, okay, well, what's included with the hour? Okay, well, what's included with this? Um, Do I get this? Do I get that? Now, you may have a fact page, but you want to eliminate as much as possible and really try to do as much in the description so that people aren't confused, right? So what's included with this training? What do I get if I book this service? Um, you know, um, are there any documents included or whatever, right? So you want to make sure that it is very clear what you are offering. Okay. The second thing is that you want to make sure that your funnel, now we talked about this in Boss Builder Training Day 2. We're not going to go over building out the funnel because if you need to go watch Boss Builder Training to go over, we talked about two different funnels. We talked about the service funnel and we talked about the retail funnel. We've already addressed those. If you're not a Boss Builder, you need to go over and you need to sign up. Okay. I'm seeing people sign up right now. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So one of the things that we're, that we, that we need to figure out next is in your funnel, which again, I'm not going to do the breakdown for, but if you're not seeing consistent sales, my major question is how easy is it for them to inquire of your services, right? I'm going to be honest with a lot of you guys. You need to stop getting people to automatically pay for some of your services. Okay. Um, you stop treating your services like retail. <clears throat> okay. For some of you, especially if you're trying to make a lot of money, people do not automatically click and buy. Some people do, right? But the higher you go in value, people are not going to click, okay? Buy this service now, book it now, right? I mean, they may, it's great, but then you have to depend upon on their other channels to market that. Your biggest way to complete a sale is your mouth, okay? On the phone, that is it. On the phone or in a Skype interview, okay? When you, especially when you're trying to do major, and you're trying to, here's the thing too, because the person who asked this question said that they changed their pricing a lot. Now, what that tells me is that, because you had to change your pricing a lot, you probably felt like you changed it because people weren't buying it, right? Now, you never change base. Now, this is huge. I do not change my pricing because of I haven't gotten sales in a couple of months. Why? Because to be honest, really, maybe some of the reasons why you haven't gotten sales was not because of the people, but because of your setup. Okay, sometimes it's not that people aren't biting, it's that you haven't given them anything to properly bite. You've actually never created good bait. Okay, I see you guys come in and sign up for uh, for uh, for Boss Builder. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And for those of you who are multi-level marketing, I have something coming up for you too. I'm seeing some people who are multi-level marketing feel awesome. So, you know, you have to make sure that you're giving them the correct bait. 
Okay, I can't say that people aren't biting if I haven't given them the correct bait. So we got to, you have to, again, I give this as homework for a lot of people. Even if you don't sign up, sign up for my coaching programs, even if you don't watch anything, look, this weekend, go back over your business and make sure that your process is correct, okay? We do not have time for you to be over here doing the wrong thing. I got to go back and make sure from my social media to my website to how they purchase, am I not clear? Am I confusing? Am I offering too much? Okay, when you're starting out as a business owner, you should not be overwhelming people um, with services, especially services. Retail is a bit different because a lot of times you want to show diverse products. You know, it depends upon what you're doing. But for those of you in a service base, this is, this is somebody who's in a service based business. You have no right. Okay. I'm telling you right now, don't you dare go back on your pricing. Keep your pricing to where you feel like you are charging your worth, but you need to look back at your funnel and you need to say, is it an automatic click or can I get them to the phone? If you're in sales, you got to be just like a salesman. What does a salesman do? A salesman wants you to get you on the phone. They want to explain the product. They want to talk about how they can upsell anything. You can't upsell. Now you can upsell in the car, but when you're doing certain Services, you can't upsell, okay, um, a $5,000 product in the cart. Are you crazy? No, you got to upsell on the phone. My question to you is, are there ways that you could be marketing your services, whether it's on social media, in person? You look at look at the way that you're doing what you're doing. I have a big question for you. Is there a way that you could be improving how you're funneling people through? I just want you just to think about that. Is there a way that you could be improving the offerings? Okay, is there a way? Because the thing about it is that even after, let's say people do know you for what you do. Let's say, you know, you're well known for what you do. You still can increase, right? One of the biggest ways to increase. Now, if you watch my Boss Builder Day 2, I gave you a big way for you to increase via Facebook ads. Okay, and you setting up a funnel to create even more um, uh, clientele. So you got to watch Boss Builder Day 2. But I will say that for those of you who are building up in your services, do not shirk on your prices, but look at your funnels. I want to get them to the phone. Okay. I want to get them to the phone. I got to get them to book an appointment. I got to get, now I talked about the funnel. We, now if you watch Boss Builder Day 2, this funnel is already in place on how I explain how to do that. But again, this kind of goes back to is what you're doing too confusing. Let's erase uh, this and let's talk about some other things on ways that you can improve to maximize your sales for consistent sales consistent sales today we're talking about how do I make sure that I have consistent money coming in from a service based business okay again we're talking about a service based business a service based business so uh, let me put this just so that people understand we're not talking about retail today we'll talk about another day but we're talking about a service based business okay now many of you already have a business plan you already have a good probability for how much that you're bringing in now for this particular individual because I'm my goal on this is to answer her question or to answer uh, the issue that she was having so this is not I know some of you guys are going to have questions but you know you may be in retail you're in a different type of service this is not for that I'm here to answer her specific question okay that she had now if you're not familiar with what her question was she said currently I struggle to properly market legal services I feel like it's tough to sugarcoat services that are absolutely needed I also find myself struggling to make consistent sales although I've modified my pricing several times one of the biggest things that we talked about with this issue was probably that she's probably having an identity issue okay that's one of the biggest ways to not um, really have consistent sales is that there is an identity issue we've already talked about that and some things that she can do to maximize that um, another thing that you need to do is when you go to your website a lot of these changes I've been making myself because I'm getting even more and more specific with what I do and I ask you guys to follow suit when you see me doing things watch okay some of you don't even need coaching sometimes some of y'all just need to pay attention okay and look at some of the things that I'm changing and what I'm doing what I'm using what products what platforms all you gotta do is pay attention okay um, and so with that you got to think about this okay now this thing we got to talk about is how do I build up a tribe okay because 
the way that I build up sales is to build up a tribe. Okay, or to build up leads, basically, right? So I'm either going to build, I'm going to be building up my email list or I'm going to be building up my lead list, okay? And sometimes they're the same thing, many times they're not, right? So let's talk about um, that, okay? So we talked about identity issue. I'm going to put this on this side. And now we're going to talk about um, this tribe issue because to get consistent sales, you got to have a healthy tribe. Now, you don't have to have a large tribe. Notice I didn't say a large tribe. I said a healthy tribe, okay? I don't have, you know, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, as, and when I say hundreds of thousands, what I mean is I don't have, like, you know, um, a 70,000 email list. You know, I don't have 70,000 people following me. Not yet. They will. But I've made, literally, like, in this year, I'm on cue to make, a, I'm literally going to have a six-figure business. And it's not, like, boasting or anything. I did it. I got it, Okay. And I'm building up even more. Now, I'm going to talk to you why. This is now, I'm going to tell you this. This is crazy because I'm in a place right now where um, this money is coming in. But one of the biggest issues is that I have to show, I, sometimes I don't show everything. And so my goal is now with this boss footage to show you guys how I'm not somebody who has a hundred thousand dollars on Instagram. I don't have, you know, um, I'm not popular in my city. Okay. Now I will be working on making sure that I'm becoming more aware, uh, you know, and connecting to more people. What I'm trying to tell you is that it's not about having a ton of people. It's about starting with who you have and building up. Now you will need to build up that list. Okay. No one's out here telling you, you don't need to build. No. But what I'm telling you is that it's not about having a ton of people. It's about having healthy people, right? So the healthier my tribe is, the conversion rate, um, how, how often they're clicking. Are they reading my emails? Okay. Um, are they purchasing my things? Here are some ways that we can build up having a healthier tribe. Some of you guys have already asked this question. So if you're in a sales-based business, this, this should help you. Now, you want to develop, okay, now, some of you guys already have this, but we're going to talk about it real short, and I'm going to keep on going. You need to have a content calendar, okay, because, ooh, content calendar. Now, content calendar is going to be all your social media, your blogs, email marketing, all that. This is actually included in the Boss Builder workbook that only my boss builders get access to. If you sign up for Boss Builder training, you're going to get an email automatically that's going to provide you where you can get your your workbook. So in the content calendar, um, you're going to make sure that you have, okay, every month, okay, and we talk about this, but we got to go back to this, Um yeah, I will answer that question later. Thank you, Kim. That's a great question. Um, is you want to make sure, okay, that you have every month, every month, every month, if you're on social media, email list, all that kind of stuff, every month, how often are you sending out content? I actually still have a content calendar up, but we're on the whiteboard, so we're not going to spend, I'm not going to pull it out. But Every month, I should know how many emails I'm sending out to my email list or how many, you know, um, it can either be, you know, how many uh, Facebook lives I'm doing or social media. If you use social media or email marketing as a stream or funnel or um, way to communicate, then this needs to be present, okay? Now, I'm going to keep on moving because some of you guys already know this, so it's not going to be help staying here, but you got to make sure that you have a content calendar. How many lives am I doing this month? What is the name? What is the topic? What is the upsell? Okay, like some of y'all do lives all day and you're not upselling anything or you're not converting people. Here's the thing. Let's say I watch a live, but I don't want what you're selling right now. How do you capture me still? This is really big. I talked about this before, but if let's say I don't want what you're talking about your life, but I may want something in the future. Okay, you better pray if you don't if you don't give me a way to connect with you after this live, whether it's an email list or a, a contact form, you better pray I come back on your next live. Otherwise, you do not know if I will reappear. And for some of you who are doing lives, I'm glad that you're doing lives, but you're forgetting about conversion. What is the point of doing 20 lives every day and you're not converting people? Now the problem for some of you is you want them to automatically buy what you're doing, and that's a 
big issue because some people need more explanation. Some people are not going to buy immediately from your live. So you have to say, okay, well, guess what? I have something for those of you who may not be interested in, you know, in, in this specifically, I have something to give for you for free. Okay. Here is, here's a great ebook. I want you to get your hands on it and you can click here. But if it, here's the thing, when you, when you offer that, make sure it doesn't sound like they have to buy it. If it's free, make sure you tell them that it's free. Okay. Sometimes you guys are putting up links, but you're not telling people um, what it's about. Perfect example is that with this video, it clearly says here, obtain your free two day tribe building training and workbook at, and here's the link. So anyone that sees this video, if they're liking what they're seeing, they're going to click on that link, which actually I have my a spreadsheet up. So in my a mail chip, so literally while I've been teaching this, people have been signing up for this list already. What I'm telling you is you got to make sure, okay, that in your content calendar, there that there's purpose in all of these activities that you're doing, okay? Now, not every um, live or, you know, thing will be, you know, a specific upsell, but you should at least be pointing people to an email list. That's the least you can, the least you can do is point them to your website or your email list. That's the least you can do, okay? But do I don't want to see any more lives where there's no links, I don't, unless it's like, you know, a live or, you know, you're out to eat or something, you know, or you're you know just showing people, you know, something in a, a lifestyle. But if you're talking about your business, there better be, if I don't see a link, y'all, I'm going to, I'm going to go into your inbox and I'm going to tell you, why didn't you put the link? Go, go, go back right now and go put a link. Cause you're telling people to share the video, right? And you're telling, you literally, you're getting more and more exposure, but no links. More and more exposure. What are you doing? Okay. So now with the content calendar, after the content calendar um, and building your tribe, you want to make sure, okay, that you have the right opt-in. Now your opt-in, it goes to your website, right? So it's what, you know, what people can sign up for and they get something for free. We talked about this in the, in the boss builder. We, so I'm not going to talk about a lot of it, but the opt-in is when they go to my website, Okay, they're going to receive something that is, now let's go back to what is a good opt-in. Okay, now this is where I almost lose it for, I just I almost lose it, literally, I lose it sometimes. So, an opt-in does not mean that it's whatever I can give for free. Okay, it does not mean that. You know, oh, well, I'm going to just give them a book on this. Or I'm going to give them something on this. I'm going to give them one of my ebooks. I'm going to give them one of my books I've already written. Guys, it's not for that. It is not. It's not. It's not. It's not. An opt-in does not mean I just give people random stuff that I can give them for free. An opt-in is supposed to give people an idea of what you do, the way you do it, and what they can expect if they invest in anything more after that. OK, a lot of you are giving people opt ins, but the option does not have an upsell, does not have any links in the back of the book. Um, you know, you're giving people worksheets and there's literally just the worksheet and there's nothing there to upsell. So basically you are giving them content and you have not thought this out. OK, now for some of you, you need to go back to your opt ins and you really need to think about, am I giving people stuff and I have not? thought about the strategy in which I'm giving them. I'm actually working on my new um, opt-ins. And my new opt-in, I'm not going to share everything, but it's going to basically be a onboarding course and work workbook. I'm, I cannot wait for it. I'm almost done it. And it's going to show people what my coaching looks like, based on giving my coaching in a nutshell, okay? Because guess what? That's what I do. Now, we're talking about service-based business, right? We're talking about service-based business. If you're in a service-based business, you, your opt-in should give people a preview of what you do, okay? So you're not giving them, oh, let me just give them a, a free random ebook, you know, a free random course. No, this goes back to that one thing. This, goes, this really goes back to the identity issue. So many people, when you go on their websites, you don't know what they do. So you're giving them a random opt-in, but my opt-in should correlate to my identity. If I say I'm a coach, then guess what? It should be something that gives them an idea of what my coaching looks like, okay? So for me, I'm working on a um, this workbook and this course that's going to help people understand how to build their tribes, Okay. Okay, so that's like, that's what I'm giving as my opt-in. If you sign up for my email list, this is what you get, okay? So you got to make sure, is your opt-in confusing? Okay, kind of goes back to, now here's the next thing in building your tribe in a service-based business. Okay, when people are on the phone with you, okay, 
Actually, I'm going to save this. I'm going to save that last. We're going to save the sales pitch last. I'm going to finish out this tribe thing on why most people don't have enough. This is main. You're not focused. This may hurt, but hey, I don't mean to step on toes. I'm here to lift you up higher. Um, for a lot of people, one of the major issues is that you are not focused enough to make the money. Okay. And I don't mean where you're not hungry. You can be hungry and not focused. Okay. I've seen children, they're hungry, but they're sure not focused when they eat. They're looking 500 different ways. Here's what I want to tell you about. This is what I want to talk to you about. When you're building up your tribe, you got to focus on your tribe. Bam. If you don't focus on your tribe, it won't build. Whatever you focus on, that is what builds. If I build on building up my email list, then I'm going to spend a lot of time focusing on conversion, focusing on doing things that would attract them, right? Um, so for some of you who are in service-based businesses, you're trying to pitch to the wrong people, right? So a perfect example is if you're pitching to this person who's in legal services, she's pitching to people who need her legal services, right? So you need to figure out who are those people? What kind of industry are they in? And you know, you're trying to pitch your legal services to them, right? So I need to focus on who are they? What kind of industry are they in? What are some things that they struggle with? That's going to help me know what content to feed them, right? To focus on them. That also helps me create content to attract random people. So, uh, you know, you got to make sure that you're doing these things. Now, here's the, here's the last thing. Well, not the last thing, but in this focus is collaboration. Collaboration. Yeah. Okay. I know that's kind of a little off, but when you're doing collaborations, okay, make sure that you're pitching what you're best at. I've seen people do webinars, lives, all this kind of stuff. You know what baffles me? Okay. You need to pitch yourself off of what you're trying to make money off of, right? So if they want you for something, a uh, perfect example is, you know, um, let's say somebody wants me to talk about relationships, right? Now, that is not what I am an expertise in. That's not, that's not, sorry, that's not what I'm an expert in, right? So you can't. Take so I, I can't say, well, you know what, that was a bad collaboration. You know, I, I mean that was a bad no, because that was not what I was supposed that's not my that's not my that's not my thing. Now, you know, you ain't want me to talk about because I'm a single woman, fine, but you can't say, well, you know, I collaborated with them and yeah, you know, I didn't get any clients. Well, I mean, you didn't that well, I mean, well, well, you didn't you didn't talk well, I mean that wasn't your ex that what what what? You know, so you need to figure out in these next in this next month, so in September. Who am I partnering with to show my legal services? Now, you got to make sure that before you do this, get get your website together, get your opt-in. You need to change your whole website. You need to change all of your social media to screen that one thing. For some of you, your Instagram bio is a mess. You tell people that you're, you're like five different things, and it's so confusing. Listen to me. I'm going to say this again. Okay, some things, okay, are some things are gifts and talents, yeah, and others are your business. Just because, I said this yesterday, just because you're gifted and talented in something does not mean that's what you need to tell people that's what you do. Just because I'm an encourager, I'm an aunt, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, you know, I'm a single woman, you know, I am an empowerment person, that does not mean I need to put all that crap on my bio. That's probably one of the biggest reasons why nobody knows what you do. They're following you because you're really dope and you're kind of a cool person, but they're not going to give you their money because you don't even know who you are. I can't give you my money and you're the one having an identity crisis. I don't know who you are, first of all. So when you go to your when, I, when you go to your Instagram bio, when you're all these things, I, make sure your stuff is cleaned up so that when you do do these collaborations and people are tagging you on Instagram and people go to your Instagram or they go to your Facebook, it's not like, um, okay, um, okay, like, you know, they, they may like it. They may follow you. But when somebody asks, do you know who's like an expert in this? They're not going to refer to you. I'm a, and if they do, you're blessed. You look, I'm mean, not even blessed. You just got to, you just, you just got to, you just got a, a break. Okay. But you will not have an overflow. Remember, cause we're talking about how do I have consistent sales? We're not talking about pop-up sales. We're talking about consistent, how I can have a probability that this month I'm going to make 
$15,000. This month, I'm going to make $100,000. I mean, some people do. This month, I'm going to make, you know, I'm going to make 5 k this month at least, right? So if you offer $500 services, you're going to need, you're going to need 10 people per month to give you, to have $5,000 in revenue. Okay, and gross. This is, you know, so you have five thousand dollars. You're gonna need five. If it costs five hundred dollars, I'm gonna need ten people. So to have ten people, I'm gonna need more than ten people though, because unless every person is at a hundred percent guaranteed conversion rate, most people don't have a hundred percent guaranteed conversion rate. Just because it's just how people are. Just because I hear you speak today does not mean I'm gonna book you immediately that same day. So they may book you next month, right? So what I'm saying is you gotta collect people, right? So I collect people by being consistent in my in my delivery, I, people know who I am. My opt-in is geared towards who they are and what they need, okay? My content calendar of the content that I'm putting out is very clear. And then my funnel or my onboarding process to new clientele is not stressful. It's easy, okay? And it's easy to get them on the phone to sign the contract and to get their services, right? Some of you need to be looking a little bit higher. Stop putting your services as um, available on PayPal. Oh my gosh, I will rip all of you apart. People are talking about, oh, you know, book my $500 coaching session. Just pay right here on PayPal. Okay, I haven't talked to you on the phone. I haven't figured out, you know, what issues you may have. I haven't figured out how I can be best to serve you. Here's the biggest thing, too, when you do that. Do you know that you prevent yourself from upselling to a bigger uh, a, a paycheck? Okay, so for some of you who are just really limited minded by that, you are not providing a way to upsell when you have people immediately buy your services. Now, for people who want to live like that and have to scramble and have to do all these little mini orders every month to make money, that's on them. That's how they want to operate. Okay, that's how they, they, they can be stressed out if you want to, but not me. Okay, not, not, not GG. Now, we're going to end by talking about sales pitch. Some of y'all do not know how to sell for your life. Oh my gosh. If if Jesus came back and he asked you to sell a bottle of lemonade, some of y'all couldn't even do it. Some of y'all will be looking at Jesus like, hey, Zeus Christos, I don't know what I'm doing, okay? So you need to learn how to sell. Some of you do not know how to sell. My gosh. So we need to go over how to have consistent sales. To have consistent sales, you got to know how to do what? You got to know how to sell. Okay. Now, let's talk about sales. Again, we're talking about um, this is a service-based business. We're not talking about retail today. We'll talk about retail later on, on another day. Now, hopefully you're enjoying this training. If so, you know, you can share it. You don't have to, you know, but you can share it. I'm also going to send this out to my boss builder. So if you're a boss builder, um, and you don't have time to come watch the replay, you'll be getting it in your email. Okay. Cause I love you guys so much. You guys are amazing. So let's talk about service-based businesses. Again, guys, if you're coaches, if you're in the service-based industry, we need to talk about how you're going to have consistent sales and how you need to pitch yourself. So we've already talked about a lot of stuff already. If you, if you're just coming in, then you're definitely going to need to watch the replay, but stick around because I promise you that you're going to still get a lot of good information. So Let's talk about it. if you have any questions, guys, drop them in the comment section so that I can go back and read them and answer them at the end of this live. So we're going to be talking about right here about how to sell yourself, not prostitution. <laughs> we're talking about how to sell what you do. A lot of people do not know how to sell themselves for their worth. Okay, here's the biggest thing. A lot of people think they know how to sell themselves because they're making money. The problem is you're not selling yourself enough to make this much money. So you think that because people are buying your stuff that you know how to sell. And you're saying, oh, man, I'm the expert. No, you're not. Because you're missing out on all of this. You know, you're missing out on all, on all, on all these. So here's the thing. We got to go back to how you can become an effective salesperson. Okay. So... Let's do this. Let's go over some bullet points. The first thing is in that one thing, remember I talked about how you have to have one thing. What is your one thing? A lot of you right now, as you're working on your business, especially if you're in service-based coaching, motivational, um, you're a speaker, um, you are um, in services, service-based, legal services, whatever, um, 
One of the things is you need to make sure that you are already having a branch of services that you're focusing on. So as you're coming out or emerging, whether you are in this or whether you're just getting started, you need to lay out what will your services be if you're in a service-based business. What will your services be based upon that one thing that you're telling people that you are good at? If you're in the hair care industry, if you're a hairstylist, okay, and you're trying to build up your clientele, you now in the hair care industry a little bit different, right? You don't have to just be, you know, some people are expert braiders, some people are good at natural hair, some people can do it all. Okay, so and and if you can do it all, I'm not telling you to not do it all, okay? Because guess what you're expert in? Hair. <laughs> so it's great. And you're maybe you specialize in you know at African American community, whatever. But when you look at your your list of sales and what is it that you do, you want to make sure of this one thing. Okay. Oh, I think I already like bring this this line back. I don't know how it looked like this. Yeah. No. Okay. One of the things I have said continuously is that God does not give you a vision that does not fill the void. This does not fill the void. Okay. Wherever there is vision, it is meant to fill voids. Now I'm not here to preach or teach. I did that yesterday on the way home. <laughs> to make a lot of money so that you can provide for your family, so that you can take yourself wherever you want to, so that you can impact people for greater good. Here's the thing. You know, people, they're scared of, to charge what they're worth. But then the thing about it is that if you don't charge what you're worth, then you can't be healthy to even pour back into people. Right. My coach said this to me yesterday. She said, you know, um, people, you know, you can't be scared to um, charge your worth. People are scared to charge your worth because at the end of the day, she said, if you don't take care of yourself, if you don't pour into yourself, they don't, if you don't allow them to pour into you, how can you pour back into them? Right? So you're over here all stressed out because to be honest, you're not charging your worth um, because you're scared. Now I'm going to tell you why most people don't charge their worth because you don't think that people exist. Let's just be real. Why do people go up and down their pricing? Why do people only operate in sales and on the fact that everything is on sale every weekend? You know, you never charge your actual worth. Why is that? Because for most people, you think that everything, and I talk about this, I, so, I talk about this all the time, your experiences do not base your pricing. Just because people paid me only this much for my past 10 years in business does not mean that I'm worth more. Sorry, sorry, does not mean that I'm not worth more. It's just that you've never charged them more. And here's the thing, you've been talking to the same people. Oh my gosh, the, the people you're talking to, of course, cannot afford more. Because these are the same people. These people only want to pay $19.99 for your coaching. Only want to pay $19.99. So, so, I mean, uh, okay. So, you're talking about, oh, these people, I can't charge more than that. Where are the people at? The people are out here. But because you never position your business to represent what you really want, how can you attract, this goes back to, I talked about making sure your website, your social media, your content calendar, all these things. You don't have to stress yourself out. You can make it simple. But what I'm saying is that if you never position your business to attract that, why are you confused on why you don't have consistent sales, right? If my business is screaming confusion all over the place, then guess what you're going to have? Inconsistent money, inconsistent income, inconsistent tribe members, because they are, the, the way that your business is represented, it represents the people and how they come. OK, so when I position myself, this is why people invest in my coaching, because what I do is I get them right. Get you right and get you tight. OK, so that you can make the money all night. OK, so the thing about it is that when, when you do this, you got to get yourself ready for the people. My question to you is, you know what you do. The question is, how do you help people? When you're in sales, the biggest thing that you can talk about over the phone is what problem you solve. OK. If you don't know what problem you solve, you cannot make the money that the people that the people will pay, okay, to give you the money, okay? People do not, this is, oh man, I'm about to crash some of y'all's world, okay? Some of y'all need to hear this from the mountaintops, okay? People do not pay you really what you're worth. They pay you based upon the problem that you solve. I was able to increase my money. How much money I've been making? Because I stopped focusing on what I thought I was worth. And I start focusing on how much is my knowledge worth? How much is my void filling worth? Okay. Now, 
you got to think about comparatively, you know, who you market. You know, I'm not out here charging a million dollars. You know what I mean? No, no. But I am charging and I will continue to charge from now on what I feel I can do. Because here's my thing. I believe that I provide results. That's what I honestly and genuinely believe because I've seen it happen. I've seen people change their business from my free videos, from my free training, from my webinars that I've given for free. And I've seen them change their business, change their model and make money without even being my coaching client. So if people can watch my trainings and set themselves up to make money, then I know that if you pay me and I'm actually focusing on your business individually, I know you're going to have results. The only way you're not going to have results is if you just get lazy and you decide not to go after it. Okay. Right. But my, but my clients who pay for pay for my coaching, I can tell you right now. Okay. They know that they're ready to go to work. I got one ready at two o'clock. Okay. They're going to be going to work. So you got to figure out is what problem do I solve? Most pre people, they have a product, but oh, let's talk about this. You got to you have products. Okay. You have services, but you don't, you don't even know the problem and what you saw. So how can you, this is really big. People will develop. Oh man. Oh man. It's so good. People develop product before they even think about the problem. And that's the reason why they never have any sales. Okay. This is, oh man, this is so good, man. I mean, I wish someone told me this a while back. You do not invent the product before you have the problem in mind because the problem is what the people are coming to for you to solve. Okay. So some of you need to sit back. You got to, I'm telling you, you got to, Ooh, you got to put your business plan in front of you. You need to sit. Some of the, for some of you, this is going to change the way you make money. This training right here, man, this, this probably should have been a part of what I've been teaching in boss mode this training right here. Listen to me. If you don't have the problem, you do not have no, you don't have any business selling any product. Now you can, but you'll be struggling up the hill because you think that if I have product, people come. No, if I have, oh man, if I have the answer to the problem, they come. If I can tell them, hey, I know how to fix what you're going through. I know how to help you transform your life by doing this. If you have been, look, I want you to listen to me on how you sell. How you sell is pitching to them what they're going through, what they're having issues with, and telling them, let me show you how to fix it. The question is, when you go back to your business, when you go back to how you sell yourself, to how you sell your business, how you sell your services, are you thinking product first or problem first? Yeah. Guess what? In order to make money, this is, guys, I'm telling you, if you're not paying attention to this right here, you are, oh man, you're going to miss out. You're, you're going to miss out in so many ways. Do you know why people go to the doctor? Because they have a problem. Why do, and look how much, again, with, with people who, these are people who are experts. They have the degrees, of course, because you're not going to operate on my body and you'll know what you're doing, right? But the thing about it is that, you know, people make money because they've identified you have a problem. You have an issue. You have a concern. I want you to listen to me. Okay. You need help. Okay. Are you thinking like that with your business? Are you thinking, I've got a product. Bye, 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 bye. Bye. Everyone, you know, everyone come over here and buy my product. Now, this is the reason why there are people who stay broken. This is the reason why there are people who are making money. I transfer my business the moment that I begin to think problem first instead of product first. Some of you are not selling. Now, I'm going to touch a little bit in retail with people who have books, things like that. The reason why you're not selling as much is because you have not identified who has the problem. So even though you're making sales now, you know, because people support you and love you, the question is you would sell more if you pitch the concerns of people and what they were going through. And maybe, you know, oh, well, you know, people who have an experience or are looking for the solution. You make more money when you offer the solution. Okay, you offer the solution to people's problems. You make less money when you're focused on just selling the product. The product is not even the main focus anyway, right? If, if we shall be honest, it is the vision. See, for every business, again, God never gives you vision or, and there's no void to fill. So I have a question. What is at the center of your business? 
Is it vision or is it void? The right answer would be vision because vision is really at the center of your business. Vision is me knowing my skill set, what I provide, my target audience, things like that. Yes, it applies to makeup. I'm going to tell you how you sell more. Okay. Um, if you're in service based business, you sell more in makeup by what? Oh, man, it's so good. Why do women buy makeup? I mean, we got to go back to like the thinking of all this, the psychology. Sales is about providing people a solution. What does makeup do for women? We may not think it's an issue or concern, but it actually is. When you think about it, right? For me personally, I buy makeup because I love the way it makes me feel. I love the way my face, I love the way how it um, fixes my blemishes. You know, it, it helps me really have a, um, a almost like a, a, a clean surface or a palette to work with, right? My, my blemishes aren't showing, my imperfections, right? It's, it's doing that. For some people, uh, makeup helps them feel better about themselves. It's a self-confidence booster. It's not that they don't see their worth, but it just makes them feel better about who they are, right? And it brings out your eyes you know it, it, it's some for some people they do makeup because it actually brings out some of their favorite features right it helps uh kind of magnify those features right some people like makeup because it's creative it's artistic right so you gotta flip that <clears throat> you have to flip that so if i want to sell this lipstick and this goes back to you guys have to practice selling what you do. I tell my, this is for all, for all you who, have, you know, I have a list of, of people who are now in my coaching program. And one thing that they're going to experience, and I pray they're ready. I got one at two is one of the things I work with them is selling themselves. If you have, if you haven't signed up for my coaching, right, you can do this all by yourself at home. Okay, you do that. You can do this right now at home. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. Okay. I want you to sit at a table. Actually, when put a mirror in front of yourself, you got to see yourself. Okay, guys, see yourself. Okay, and I want you. You can get a friend. You can get look, but you got to practice this. I want you to sell what you do. If you actually have a product that is a part of your services or whatever, I want you to pitch them what you do by addressing a problem. What I can tell you is get some index cards. Some of you, when I tell you this is going to transform your business so much if you just listen. The insight that I get is from God. I promise you, have the stuff. I look, it's God, but it works because it's all linked to building up your tribe to convert. See, I teach people how to build their tribes to convert them to make more money to scale their businesses. You can't convert. Okay, I'm telling you, you can't convert people, okay, and you're not good at sales because it's your mouth. Your mouth is the vessel piece to explain your product, to pitch it to people, to upsell, to make more money, okay? So I want you to grab some index cards, okay? You can grab some index cards, and I want you to write out on, in, on each index card a problem or um, something that people would need from your product, from, from your product or service, right? And then what you're going to do is you're going to put each problem in front of you, and you're going to pitch that. You're going to pitch what you do. So so perfect example is with makeup, right? I mean, this is going to help a lot of you guys grab an index card, grab, and you can get a stack of, of, of as many as you need comparative to the issue. Okay. And let's say you're doing makeup for my guys. Let's say you're in, it could be a service-based business. Let's say you do digital marketing. Okay. I want you to think about the top issues that you, that you feel. What are the voids that you feel? Put each void on an index card. And I want literally sit in front of a mirror. Okay. And I want you to grab each index card and I want you to pitch yourself to yourself with that one index card. So if you're in digital marketing and one of the issues that you solve is you help people um, use social media or let's say you don't, you use people, you help people use uh, social media um, ad mark ads. So let's say, you know, you're an expert at Facebook ads, Twitter ads, LinkedIn ads, whatever it is. You help your clientele take Facebook ads and convert them and so that they can obtain more leads and clients. Okay. So what would be the issue? issue to that the issue is i am trying to use facebook for my business for our startup for our for our mid-size or large size company and we're not converting them so what you're going to do is you're going to write that vote in the card and you're going to pitch yourself i promise you most people can't do this because i'm gonna tell you this we are so quick to create prop we're so quick to create the product but we are not quick to say you know what what's the problem that we feel and so you're only limited by your ability, I'm telling you, you're only limited by your ability to solve the problem. That's it. 
Your limitation is not in, you know, well, Genesis, I'm not, you know, the best known in the country for this. It's not that. No, your issue is that you're not good at pitching the solution to the problem. Okay. So you can also do this um, if you want to even practice even more is focus on a particular niche. So I know for me in these next couple of months, I'll be focusing on hair salons and stylists. It's, it's an industry I've always wanted to tap into. I, I choked um, on my first one. Okay. <laughs> but um, I'm ready. And so for me, my area will be, okay, how can I help? What are the issues that hairstylists and salons have with building up their tribes? Locally based, because these are locally based people, okay? So in this, what are, what are my issues? What are their issues in building them up, okay? What, what is my solution to that? And so I'm going to, this is what I do. I take an index card. I take an index card and I write on there, okay? And this one, this is a person who, you know what? They struggle with getting more people in the chair, their issue is getting more people in the chair. How will my expertise bring more people in the chair? And I pitch it. I, I, I'm pitching it. So that way, when I get in front of people or you get on the phone and somebody asks you, you're ready. When 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 someone says, you know, when you're going in the front, and you, let's say you're going to somebody, let's say you're working at a table, let's say, you know, you're, you're talking to somebody about your product. This will help you become a lot more confident in pitching it to them. You know, so this is the reason why, you know, when people sit in makeup chairs or, you know, even when you take your car to the dealership, people ask, well, what's the issue? What's wrong? You know, uh, uh, what is it that you need? Right? And the first thing that you do is you explain them the issue. You know, hey, you know, my car is not working right. It's, this is what it's doing. Okay, well, you know, let, let's see how we can fix this. Matter of fact, I have some parts here. We feel like this is going to be the best thing to help fix your car. Right. How come you're not like that when you pitch yourself? You know, here's you. Um, well, I mean... Yeah, you know, and, and yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, that'll work. Yeah, that no, you don't sound confident. You don't sound like you know what you're talking about. You sound like you're just hoping on a wish and a prayer that somebody's going to just come on down and see about you, right? <laughs> Jesus, just come on down and see about me, right? That's not going to work, okay? So I really feel that we've addressed enough for today to get you guys on the right path, to get you guys started on, you know, how do I make more sales in my business? Okay, you're going to make more sales when you're clear. Okay, let's, let's kind of, let's, let's sum it up. And then I'm going to open it up for questions because I saw some of you guys asking questions. So if you have any questions, guys, it's time to now drop them in the um, comment bar below. Okay, so we let's just sum it all up. This is the summary for today. And shout out to everybody who um, is watching the training. Shout out to everybody. It's been awesome. Okay, you did an hour training. Look, you got a whole bunch of information. So the first thing that we talk about is you need to make sure you have a clear identity. Okay, the identity needs to be clear. Okay. We also talked about in you building your tribe. Okay, and you building your tribe, you want to make sure... Um, that you just got your workbook. Hey, shout out to Shada. In building your tribe, you know, one of the things that you definitely want to make sure um, is that you are being consistent with them. We talked about the content calendar. Okay, and again, we're talking about, uh, for those of you just joining us, um, we're talking about um, service-based business. This, the, the question that someone had was about um, them having legal services and, you know, they weren't having um, enough people funneling through for their business, okay? And so um, they, we just basically went over all of the ways for them to create consistent income. The last thing we talked about was your sales, okay? Making sure that you are confident, okay? And you know the void in which you feel. I make more money when I do what? And we talked about this, okay? We, we got to talk about this. I make more money... When I do what? what? And who can answer this question? Do I make more money when I pitch the product first or I pitch the problem? Who can give me that answer? Do you make more money? Hey, Lewis, how are you? Hey, Kim. Do you make more money when you pitch the problem or you pitch the product? I'm going to see who's been paying attention. What should I create first? Or what should I focus on first? Am I focusing on the problem? Am I focusing on the product? Because for a lot of you, this is going to transform your business, period. It's going to transform how you do everything. 
Okay. What are you focusing on first? You're focusing on the problem. Exactly. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. Thank you guys for paying attention. I don't pitch product. I pitch problems. Okay. Okay. People don't come to the doctor. Okay. For, hey, hey, you know, hey, you know, I, I, I want your, I want your stethoscope. You know, I want your meds. No. What do they pitch? I'm having heartburn. My leg is falling off. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, uh, I have a blood clot. Okay. I have can't. This is serious. Okay. This is serious. What do you make? You. It's because of the problem. You, it's the problem. The problem. Here's the thing. People come for voids to be filled. Okay. So you need to make sure. Are you out here pushing product and just, oh man, pushing product and pushing product, pushing product. And then guess what? People identify you when you help them, what? Solve their issues, okay? And remember, you're going to have to sit down and think how, what, what exactly is the issues that I am solving, right? So, and then how can I convert those into programs? How can I convert those into courses? How can I convert those into products? So that's the reason why you collecting leads and email lists is so important because you got to figure out what are the issues these people are having. When people call you on the phone or someone's talking to you in a conversation, instead of you trying to figure out how you can pitch them here for an issue, I want you to listen to me. Whenever people are talking to me about, you know, Elgin's, I love what you do. I'm going to ask, oh, hey, you know, what's the things that you're struggling with? Because how can I sell when I don't know what to sell them that best fits their interest? A lot of you guys are figuring out why I'm not why I'm not having consistent sales. Maybe it's because you're trying to feed like a blind man. You cannot feed people blind. You cannot sell to people blind because you're gonna just be hoping and wishing on a prayer that they buy something. That's not that is too much work. It's not my job to be a mind reader. I'm not a mind reader. I'm a person that helps people in business and ministry grow their communities to convert them for sales and uh, and donors, basically, right? People who are giving to them. So. In if I don't know their problem, I don't know how to help them. And that's the thing. Art, and that's how you make more money. You limit yourself when you don't allow people to speak, when you don't allow people to tell you what's wrong. You have to realize I'm here to solve a problem. Okay. We are void fillers. God does not give you vision without there being a void that needs to be filled. Okay. So let's open it for questions, guys. It is your time to answer, to ask me any question that you have. Any question that you have, it is now time for Q&A. Kimberly, I got your question first, so we're going to answer that one first. But guys, if you have any questions, it is now time to answer questions. It's time for you to make some money, honey, okay? For my ladies and for my gents, it is now time for Q&A. Awesome, Sash. So let's go to these questions so kim i saw your question i'll pull your question up first how often do you clean your email list that's actually a great question so i do believe in cleaning and cleansing email lists um the way that i do them i'm going to tell you how often but um I do them about every three to four months really every quarter um but what i look for this is very important i look for non-engagement Okay, I never clean people who've at least clicked one email. Um, I only clean based upon people who've never opened an email, period. Um, only because I've been that person that has, and you got to think about yourself on the other end of it, right? So for myself, I've been a person, and guys, remember, it's Q&A time, so be sure to answer, to drop those questions in if you have them. I've been a person who has opened emails before from people but didn't buy. And then when I decided it was time to buy, I bought, right? So for me, when it comes to cleansing your email list, I always say cleanse it based upon people who are ghosts. They're ghosts. They have never opened an email. They've never. That's the only people who I clean, okay? It's the only people who I clean on my email list. I'm like, but I don't clean out people who at least clicked on a um, an email, you know? Um, now, when it comes to the year, when it's been a whole year, then I look at people who have not opened an email in a whole year. That's a little bit different, right? So I tell people every quarter, look at people who've never opened up an email. Um, and then at the after a whole year, if they've never opened an email, you know, let's say, you know, it could be nine months or whatever. It's time to clean them out. 
Okay, so if it opened like one email, but that was like for the whole year, you know, you got to clean them out. It's been, it's been, it's been months. Okay, hopefully it makes sense. So I, I don't, I don't try to wipe people out completely because I know how I am. I'm a person who does the same thing, but, uh, you know, you gotta, you, you go based upon their engagement. Okay. Do you think there's a difference in impact from doing a live versus a recorded video as it relates to engagement? That is a great question. It is all about knowing your tribe. Um, lives, uh, it depends upon, it depends a couple of things. It depends upon what is your intended outcome, okay, with this. Engagement is not based upon what you do. It's based upon who you're engaged with, right? So, does, let, let's break that down. Does my live video impact people more from a recorded video? It's based upon your tribe. It's based upon people who connect with you. For me, people enjoy my lives, okay? But then from them sharing them, they expand, right? So lives are lives capture people's attention. And we know this based upon the engagement of the overall Facebook community, right? So lives are grabbing people's attention, right? Um, and so it's a great way to grab their attention, to get them to even just peek once, to get them to peek, to get them to come in and peek once, right? With a video that you upload, excuse me, it's based upon what you do. I actually would tell people to test it. I would test it. Do a video live and then do a video um, where it's pre where it's pre-recorded and you're uploading it. See what the difference is in engagement. Okay, I would say at least do it twice. And do different types of videos so that you actually get a good result. You can actually read it right, right? So maybe let's say you do a demonstration video live and then do a demonstration video uploaded. See what gets the most engagement. Give it at least three days. This is big. I don't know why some of y'all want to faint after 24 hours. Oh, uh, people didn't look at my video. It's not, it's not, it's not, oh my God, it's only been like six hours. Give it at least 72 hours so that you can get enough reading on it. Okay. Enough reading on it. So I think an impact is really correlated to your tribe, to your people. I can't say what gets more engagement right now. Now it's proven that video and photos get more engagement than a, um, than like a text post on Facebook. But then guess what? There are people out here who do text posts every day and they get tons of engagement because that's what they're feeding their tribe. So their tribe isn't used to the photo. Their tribe isn't used to the video, right? So it, it just, it depends upon your tribe. Now there are some, some rules, kind of like some like undergarden, like, you know, things with video and, you know, um, and, um, uh, photo get more attention we know from facebook ads that video ads get more attention than just a photo or text that's clearly done okay so but that's an ad so you know it just depends i would tell you in my opinion test it see which one correlates to your tribe because it may not be the same for mine okay let me know if that answers your question okay deja um how frequent should i send out Problem or product email, meaning an email with a problem, for example, dark circles under eyes and then a concealer from cosmetic line for sale. I love how you are connecting your product to your problem. That's exactly what we do. We always attach a problem to a product. You demonstrate the product. So, okay, how frequent should I send out problem or product emails, meaning an email with a problem, for example? Okay, is now it goes back to your content calendar. So let's talk about real quick a content calendar. What I tell people is content calendar. How many emails are you sending out? Now, I believe, Deja, one of the things that me and you had talked about was an email per week, right? So look at your calendar. I know, guys, it's really squiggly. Week one, week two, week three, week four. September actually already has four weeks, <clears throat> right? Well, it's this weekend, and then it's like four whole weeks, right? Problem. No, oh, before we do this, I'm sorry. Let me do this. For a content calendar for content or even email marketing to make your to make your knowledge stretch have an overall problem okay so what i would do is i would do this okay i would if if you're doing let me look back at your question and guys you can hop off now that we're now we're just we're going deeper into just the um into the uh, question and answer, okay? So you, you, if you need to sign off, great. Um, so you're gonna talk about dark circles under eyes, okay? 
I would do a overall theme on, um, you can either do problem spots or, um, let's actually, you could do this. You could spend a whole month talking about, um, that, that one area. So the eye, so like the dark circles. Okay. Now, what I would do is I would brand it and come up with a really cool name, you know, something really cool that uh, correlates to, you know, people who, you know, uh, suffer with dark circles under their eyes, right? So you can come up with some kind of cute name or whatever. And then what I would do, I would spend, so I would do, spend the next four weeks focusing on that and pushing one particular. Now, you can push. This is very, it's very important push when it comes to sales, especially in retail. Every week, and I, actually, I was, I was just funny. I was in the bathroom. I know this may not be too much information for some of y'all, but I was in the bathroom, and something, and a thought came to me for strategy, and um, it, it's something that you really need to think about, right? So every week, you can push, especially on the Friday weekends, you can push like you know free top selling items, but as far as the content for that month, right? You can push a overall theme. So I'm not, and this is very important for some of you guys. Some of you think that, okay, if I focus on one product, it means I don't focus on the others. No, on the weekends, you can push, okay, your top selling items per week. You know, during the week, sending like, you know, a sales email. This is what's hot this week. But for as far as the educational purpose, right, pick one theme. Okay, pick one theme. Okay, and so what I would do, I would have it be all about dark circles, right? And then what I would do is on the next three, the next four weeks, I would send out an educational email, right, or video. So what I would do is I would, the first week should be an email, kind of, you know, letting people know, kind of onboarding them to what will be happening that month, okay? In week two, you want to do a video, Okay, explaining, and I will get, you know, hey, you can use me. I don't think I got that many dark circles, but you can even use yourself if you have dark circles. And you want to talk about why the, you know, of course, the email talks about the why. Okay, use the video to talk about the what. Okay, so guys, let's look at the dark circles. So I'm, right now we're looking at dark circles. Now, the reason why, you know, of course, we don't want to focus on dark circles is because, you know, we see how it adds to the blemishes that we already have, right? And we don't want that to happen, right? You don't want to have blemishes. You don't want to have. So what am I doing? I'm talking about the issue, right? Yeah, this is the issue. Now, now in this video, I want to show you some of the reasons or ways that you can prevent this from happening, right? One of the ways that you can prevent this from happening. So we're going to take this concealer. It's from my brand. It's called blah, 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 okay? And in the, in the bio, matter of fact, if you want to purchase concealer, there's a link in the bio so you can check this product out. So we're going to now use the concealer to apply this to the areas. And now watch the way that I'm stroking this. So you hear what I'm saying, right? So I'm pitching the product. Now, in week three, what we're going to do is I want you to do another email, Okay, kind of highlighting what happened the week before. Okay, and then talking about now adding to the dark. Now, now that my dark circles are fixed, what will this do for my whole face? Right. For now, now you're gonna maybe do that. You know, a little makeup tutorial where you're helping somebody who has a lot of dark circles. You did the you did the video before where it talked about dark circles exclusively. Now we're gonna talk about using the whole face. The last week you want to do a video on the concealer itself. So guys, this you know this month we focused on of course hiding and you know helping your dark circles. Now in this video I want to talk to you about the product that we've been using this whole month. Okay, which is this concealer. Let's look at the consistency of this you know the consistency of this concealer what this concealer does and how it can benefit you how it can help you with the dark circles bam now the focus then for this product is that concealer okay that concealer okay now of course you can sell all your other products that you have but that is in my opinion how you do that okay let's go to the next question guys i may need to go get my charger we may need to have like a five second break okay deja if you <laughs> i'm joking Okay, let me see. Let's erase this. Okay. Love my eraser for my whiteboard. It looks like a real eraser, right? It looks like a real eraser. Okay. Now, guys, we are done for questions. I cannot take on any more questions. Deja, if you can get my charger, it is in my wall next to my TV. And you can bring it down in the back office, not the main office, but the back office. Thank you, where the phone is. It'd be awesome. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, Deja's my sister-in-law. Okay, so 
let's uh, go into Indiana. Okay, guys, so no more Q&As. No more Q&As. Let's go to... Um, uh, okay, Kirsten. Hopefully I'm saying your name right. Hopefully I'm saying your name right. Kirsten, how do you get people to follow you before you launch? That is a great thing. That is a great question. How do you get people to follow before you launch? Well, one of the things, and this is actually a great strategy, is what you want to do, this is kind of creating the tribe, right? The way to get people to support you, um, even to um, follow you before you launch, is to create the tribe beforehand. By doing what? The problem. Okay, so you're going to look at the problem. Oh, does it open? Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to look at the problem. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> so what you're going to do is, oh, thanks. What you're going to do is you're going to look at the problem that you have, okay? Now, you can actually build up your clientele. This is so big. A lot of people, hold on, let me plug up my laptop. A lot of people don't feel like they can do this. Right. They feel like I got to first have the product ready before the people come. But what you do is before you launch a product, you build out content. OK, so you can use social media. OK, on your website, you should have your whole website may not be done, but on the home page, you should have a landing page. Now, you don't even need to have a website. Um, you could just use your email list, right? If you use MailChimp, they give you a form link that you can share out to people. What I would do is I would take that link, that MailChimp link, and I would go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, and convert that link. If you actually um, have an account with them, you could actually customize your links. So um, just how, like, for my workbook, I'm not going to give you all the link, but, you know, um, <laughs> you know, I did a bit.ly link. So you can do, like, you know, let's say your business was called Roots. You could do B-I-T dot L-Y. VIP roots and that's how people can sign up for your email list right so in that um, you want to make sure hold on give me a second okay that's how you can build your email list now while you're doing this you can you can already begin to start doing collaborations right because you can start to gather people you can even start to vend people think you can't vend you can vend without product y'all it's called investing and in getting people already. If you have, it could be just, uh, you know, if you have a, a picture of your future products or what's going to come out, you can just start to gather emails. People the people really don't realize how, how much building a business, how much intention you got to put behind it. People feel like I got to have product ready. I have to have my services ready. No, you don't. I can literally, and this is, to be honest, if you do this, it will help you have people to sell to once you come out. This will eliminate you having to gather people once you get people. You will already have the people ready to bite, okay? And so you want to begin building up the email list. Once you build up that email list, once you, as the people start coming, don't wait until the product is ready. Start taking the behind the scenes of what you're working on, right? So start sending out emails. Hey, guys, you know, this is da-da-da from da-da-da. Let's say your company was called Roots. <laughs> I'm just making it up. Hey, guys, it's Genesis from Roots. And we want to thank you so much. You know, we're taking you guys behind the behind the scenes process of our business while we're getting everything uh, together. So, guys, we want to show you some behind the scenes of the products that we're working on. You know, tell us what you think about this, you know. And so what I'm doing is I'm building up attention to my products, right, or my services. You know, hey, guys, we're in New England and, guys, we're you know, we decided, you know, we're going to be, let's say you're vending, but you don't have a product yet, but people can come meet you. So, hey, guys, we're going to be in New York on, on September the 25th okay and we definitely want to meet you guys we're working on our business and if you would love to meet us at this vending place we're going to be here vending and telling people about what's to come and then let's say they don't come well you can share the pictures from your vending experience take pictures and send out pictures to your email list showing them what you're doing put those pictures on your social media you're, you're and again this is if your focus right because your business needs to have a focus needs to have the right um you know branding so if you have all those pieces in place it's 
should help, but you will need to get to know more people. While you're building up your list, while you're building up your business, go out here and start to network with people. At least get a business card together. You may not have your uh, website and everything, but what I tell people is you can actually pass out business cards um, and now, even if, you, even if you're working on your business and it's not yet up, get a business card that has your name, okay? Um, you could be a Google Voice number if you don't have a business phone yet up. You, you can actually use this for your thing. Your Google Voice, okay, it, you should have, you can have your email set up. At least have your email set up, okay? And um, and then you can also uh, put on your social media links because you, you should have your social media up. You don't have to wait till your product is done to have social media, okay? So you can have all this on your business card, okay? And start networking with people now. Even if you don't have product ready, you can vend without product, y'all, okay? So that's what I would do. This is how you would, you should network, do some collabs with people, you know, because you should be an expert in whatever industry that you're coming into, right? So you have enough uh, expertise to come on these people's platforms and provide information and then send them to a link for them to sign up if they want to learn more. That's how I would do it. Okay, let's pick the next question. Shout out to Deja for giving me my charger. Oh my gosh. Okay, because I did not want to have to leave y'all to do this. Okay. Well, that answers your question. Um, and then, of course, continue to watch my trainings <laughs> because I'll provide you more and more info along the way. So if you're not signed up for Boss Builder, you need to click the link in my bio. Okay, but thank you, Kirsten, for that wonderful question. Kimberly asks, so as I rebuild my tribe, people like more people like more, and interact with pictures of me rather than stock. But I could turn that into a win when the problem I solve is making people look well in photos. Yes. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Okay. Did I make sure I make sure I didn't skip? Oh, no. Yeah, whoa. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me answer Indiana's question. I did not answer Indiana's question. Okay. Sorry. So Indiana. Um, Indiana, I don't know what to Indiana, Indiana. So how do you prevent giving all your information away in a live versus webinar or coaching? Okay, good question. First of all, you need to have the Holy Spirit <laughs> so that you can have self-control. <laughs> okay, here's how you, here's what I do. This is the main filter. So there's general information, then there is specific information, okay? Kimberly, I got you. Uh, so there is general information, and then there is specific information, okay? So one of my things is you know by how much information you're giving out by these funnels. So general means this applies to everybody. Specific means this applies to you. Oops, I did not mean to erase it like that. Get the back button. Okay. So there's that's the main difference is it applies to everybody and then this applies specifically to you. Okay. There's generic information and there's specific information. Specific information means it is specific to your problem and your situation. Okay, it's specific to your problem and to your information, to what you're going through, to what you need help on specifically. Boss Builders was a general training, so it was free, okay? But guess what? If I'm doing co my coaching clients is for people who, guess what? They have a specific problem, like for instance, Indiana, you, you, you're, you're, you're my coaching client, right? So you invested in coaching with me. Now, when you apply for your coaching, okay, it was because you had a specific problem, you have specific issues, right? So I'm going to charge you for those specific problems. Does that make sense? Your live, your webinars and coaching should be on generic information, okay, that can be shared without you figuring out, okay, I need to charge people for this, okay? Generic versus specific. Okay. The other thing as well is you got to learn how to do this. I'm not talking about you specifically, just people in general. Shut up. Okay. Um, when I do lives and I do, um, you know, uh, webinars, things like that, I look at the general issues that people are struggling with, kind of like universal issues. Okay. What I always do is this. This is very smart. And I just encourage you to do the same thing. You wet their feet, wet equals free, okay? And 
when you do the paid, okay, it is like the master class or like the deeper information, okay? Perfect example is I did a Facebook Live on being counted out. I think I did like a Facebook post or whatever on being counted out. What I did was I took that and I made it deeper and I did an online course called Count it out. So it's $99, about $99 feet. So what I'm saying is you have to, it goes by, okay, what, what's wetting their feet? And then what is the master class? You know this because again, you, and this is something that's just so important. When you're doing lives, guys, like this is the reason why having a content calendar is so key. When you're in business or even on your personal, um, you know, pages, you know, you have to organize this stuff ahead of time. Okay. Listen, Organize it ahead of time. So when I am doing certain stuff, I'm already, sometimes I know, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I need to shut up, sometimes I don't. <laughs> so you gotta know, okay, well, I'm gonna do a live on, you know, September the blank. And this is gonna be a general. And then I'm going to upsell, okay, this class, and this is the specific. Or I'm gonna upsell, okay, this program, okay, which is, specific we're just gonna act like that just that specific okay <laughs> does that make sense hopefully that makes sense i'm praying that that makes sense so it's all about generic information versus specific information okay and you knowing that sometimes you gotta shut up because you're gonna give out too much that really is general okay and there's also you knowing that at the end of the day I got to make sure that my content calendar is prepped for me to know, okay, I'm going to be talking about this for 30 minutes. For some of you, you need to limit how long you go live because you're getting, you, I, for some of you guys, for you to sit up on a live for past an hour, some of you are going to tell all your stuff legitly because, you know, for those of us who like to coach people to success, you can be addicted to giving people stuff for free, but keep your mouth shut and know if it's general, okay, it's for the world. If it's specific, it is for um, upselling and pricing, and even some general information is paid, you know, but it's really all about, um, to like, how much are you helping them? Right. So, I mean, this, I can't really say much because like this webinar, right? Like this live training right here is going to transform a lot of y'all's business from the job. Right. You know, but for me it's about, I focus on coaching. So my upsell is the coaching. So I know that if I give you know, um, generic, helpful information that it will attract you guys, you know, and I know that it's going to help you guys see my expertise, right? And that's why you come to me for specific, okay? So there we go. Hopefully that helps you. Okay, let's go to the next question, shall we? Okay, how many emails, sorry, Deja, how many emails should I send out weekly? I know Fridays are good for sales. Is that enough? Just Fridays and Saturdays? No, it's not. Um, so your, I believe what we had first started you on with was an email a week to develop consistency. For those of you who don't email at least once a week, you are really not working your email list. You, you're going to be so mad. So I, I think at first, Deja, I had you set at one a week. Now, I believe now, and I know because you're making sales, and I'm telling you, your testimony, I, I need to get you in front of the camera so that I can, um, I need to tell this little testimony. But um, once you've gone twice, once a week, you can now go to two times a week. And then remain consistent for two times a week. After two times a week, then you go three. And that is the max. I'm not into an email a day. I know some people say, oh, yeah, it's an email a day. I believe that sending an email a day can, in my, this is my, this is a personal opinion. Guys, this is a per, because I've, I've heard experts that I respect say, you know, I, I'm sending one a day. I am not into the one a day thing. It's just me personally. Um, so I believe three times is, is, is really max. Okay. It's really max. Um, that's just how I feel. Okay. So two times a week, if you're at one time, do two. And if you're at two, do three. And again, this is if you've been building it up consistently because you should not change if your people can't sense it. Okay, so, you know, you have never sent them an email and now you're sending them three emails a week. No, warm them up, please. And have a purpose behind your emails as well. So, what, if you're, because Deja, you're in retail, this is how I would do it. Um, you should be doing a email at the beginning of the week. So, you can either do a Sunday or a Monday. I really think a Monday is great because Sunday is really kind of like an overhaul from the weekend. And being that you're in retail, most people are, um, they, you know, they, they go by their check when they get paid. 
So Monday is like the intro, like this is what you're going over this week. Um, and then what I would do is, cause remember you're having a content calendar, right? So you, this is where you would introduce what you're going to be talking about that week with the overall theme. Plus in the email, let's include, let's do three products, three hot selling products. Okay. That they can buy from your store with purchase links. The middle of the week, I want you to let them know about what's going to be um, happening this weekend. So this is like a Wednesday, okay? Wednesday, yeah, more of a Wednesday. So this is where you're going to let them know about like weekend sales, okay? Because again, you're in retail, but you're also a blogger. So you can do weekend sales, plus you can do like if there's any new articles on the blog, okay? Okay, then you definitely need to send out an email on Friday, now, for retail, you can sneak in a fourth email, and that fourth email can happen um, on Saturday. Now, sometimes you got to send more emails, but what I'm saying is like the overall pattern, right? So these are now, these are optional emails, these, these other ones, but three is good. Friday is when you're going to push. Um, you can theme it. You can make it sound cool. These are um, your products. And you can also do a recap at the bottom, but at the top, let's focus on products. At the bottom, let's do a recap of what's been happening that week with your tribe, okay? Now, the optional emails on a weekend for anyone in sales or has a product is you better, if y'all are not sending out emails on Friday and you have a tribe and you have products, you are losing it, okay? I'm going to take you and I'm going to walk you on a plank on a boat and I'm going to tell you that you better jump out and learn how to swim, okay? <laughs> you need to learn how to send, oh my God, for you not to send emails on the weekend is like, and you have books and you have products and courses, I don't know what you're doing. So, um, what you're going to do is from your products and from your, um, from your recap, you can send another email on like Saturday, right? Telling them like, you know, like a reminder email on sales. Make sure this stuff is branded, please. And looks cute, especially because you know you're in a beauty industry. Make sure it looks like you're in a beauty. You know, make make that thing look glammed up. Make it look cute. Have some fun with it. Okay. <clears throat> that is like the email build out that I would do as far as um, uh, for you. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the next question, and we're gonna be almost be done because I gotta get off at least by one because I got coaching at two. I'm so excited for my coaching clients. Oh my gosh. The fact it makes me feel so good. Like they've invested in themselves and their business is going to grow. It's, it's awesome. And their hunger, like my, my clients hunger. They're amazing. I love you guys so much. It makes me feel so proud. You guys should be proud of yourselves too. So we did here. I'm so I jumped over everybody. Kimberly. So as I rebuild my tribe, people like more, people like more and interact with pictures of me rather than stock. But I could turn that into a win with the problem I solve is making making people look well in photos. So photography, great, 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 great. Um, let's talk about photography. This is an industry I have been wanting to focus on for so long. Maybe one day I'll focus on it. My whole, um, what I want to do in these next couple of months is build out online courses that specific niches can take to help them build their tribes something I'm working on. I don't know how long it's going to take, but <laughs> we're working on it. We're working on it. Okay. Cause you know, different industries, you have kind of different rules. And so I want to, some things are universal. Some things are not. So let's talk about photography, shall we? So one of my things that for a lot of people are in the photography business, um, you, you, you have ways of winning, but I've, you know, some people is just kind of like, I don't know what they're doing. So Photography. The first thing, of course, is to look at the issue, the problem that you solve. So you talked about how your problem that you solve is people who feel like, you know, they don't look good. And so your idea is through photography is showing them how they can look great through photography. Right. So that's the problem or the issue that you do. And you have yourself and people love pictures of you. Right. So this is Kim. Kim has short hair. So we got to put Short hair with a little bang on the side. You know, Kim got a little bang on the side. So, and this is her, her, this is her camera. First of all, I know your camera has like a whole bunch of stuff on it. So we're going to, this is her camera going. 
got like 15 parts to it because she's a professional photographer. You know, they got a whole setup. Okay, there we go. So this is Kim and Kim, <laughs> she gonna kill me. This thing looked like a pasta noodle. But, um, you know, Kim, she, um, people love pictures of her. People love pictures of Kim. Okay. So what I would do, and this is something that you got to really think about, is um, for your photography business, uh, when it, and I love the way that you rebranded everything. It's awesome. So based upon your niches that you're offering, who is your focus market? Now, if you're trying to make more money, things like that, you got to really figure out, you know, who is your focus? Who are you focusing on? Are you focusing on individuals, businesses? Now, you can focus on multiple people, right? But what I'm saying is, you remember we talked about, um, I did a, it was a live I did, where I told you guys, I want you guys to focus in the next 30 days, right? So in 30 days, I want you to focus on a particular group of people. I believe this is Boss Builder Day two i'm talking about for 30 days i want you guys to focus on a particular niche you can serve multiple people but i want you to focus on a particular niche right so what i would do is i would take yourself and make yourself the example right now to convert that what you have to talk about is you know um i think people have to get to know i, I think and you're doing more and more of this right but you also need to think about ways that you can make more and more money right so you're focusing on engaged couples. Okay, good. Let's take this. Let's take engaged couples. Okay. So what would be great is if you focus on, um, give me a second. Okay. Using yourself as an example, you can talk about how, you know, um, maybe, again, because, you know, it could be, because, you know, it's not like you're engaged. Uh, but what you could do is how did you get your photos to look so well? I know I just got really loud all of a sudden, but how did you get your photos to look so well, right? And talking about whether it's lighting, talk about whether it's, you know, the way you position yourself, talking about on how, like, the benefits of certain positions, you know, in photography or how to, you know, how to, you know, change the body position or whatever. There's that. But I think that more importantly, with you focusing on engaged couples, I would use more of your photos as a way to open up to your personality, because if you're focused on engaged couples and you're not engaged, it's kind of hard to use yourself as an exact example. So what I would do is, I just spelled that completely wrong, is use that to open up your personality. Because your photos are a reflection of the quality of what they're going to get. I would use that, I would shoot more photos of yourself though, to brand yourself so like for ebook covers for because if you know that they're starting to be more attracted to your face and to who you are the colorful hair then use that to rock your personality that's what i would do i would do that for my ebooks right i would be um even showing your photo in like the welcome emails right um i would have your photo on your website a lot of places i mean if you know that people are engaging with you because of pictures of you I would, I, that's what I would do then. I would work, and I've already seen you starting to do that a lot more, but that's what I would do. I would work that. Just how on this live I have a picture of me, I would do some of your OBS stuff, and guys, if you don't know what that is, Kim, Kim does, with your face. Like, people like my face, even though some days I feel like, I'm like, what? People like my face, so I use my face, you know? I, I use my face. To attract people. I use my, you know, uh, my cartoon character on my book to attract people, right? So that's what I would do. That's what I would do, okay? Now, guys, remember, if you're in MLMs, this is perfect for you as well. We'll talk about you guys a little bit another live. So that's what I would do. Now, it, now, now, let's finish with this. Now, if you're focusing on engaged couples... Yeah, I would plaster yourself everywhere, though, for real. I would plaster yourself everywhere. Because if they're loving you because of you, then you plaster yourself everywhere. Use that to your advantage. Okay. So, with engaged couples, um, most of, and I would run some ads on your local area, right, targeting them. But one of the things that I would do is, what are things that engaged couples struggle with when it comes to photography, right? A lot of times, it's finding the right photographer, 
right? A lot of times it's trying to figure out, you know, what are some great shots to capture? And then what you would do is you would actually add in your ebook or your video um, photos that you've taken of couples in those different positions, right? Or different ways of positioning them, you know, um, what are some ideas for our photography shop outside, you know, in the farm, you know, <laughs> whatever, you know, are there, you know, great places or whatever, um, you know, uh, a great way too is, especially if you're targeting a, um, people in your area is giving them a list of great locations to, sh to, to be shot at. So whether it's parks, um, whether it is, you know, um, private homes, whether it is, if you have like a list of places, like it's a great way to get them. Right. So like sh doing something specialized for engaged couples in your area, um, you, of course, I'm going to, I'm going to assume that you're going to be at pretty much every single wedding expo that's in your area or even nearby, right? To get those engaged couples to provide them resources, right? Um, one of the things that a lot of people do is, again, they market themselves. I always tell people market the problem, right? We talked about this marketing the problem. So when the people come to your table or you're introducing yourself, tell them about resources that you have to help them in their wedding, in their wedding process. I would, I know for me, if I was getting married, I need help. Like I, I have enough, I'm trying to pick enough people trying to write enough checks. Can you help me? And figuring out as an engaged couple, like, we know we need to get shots. We know we have to do save the dates. We know we have to do all this kind of stuff. Can you help us in that process besides just saying, oh, well, I'm a photographer. No, I, no, no. But, but, but no, I need help in my process. So, like, you can maybe help us um, with some of the issues we're thinking about. So, like, where, where should we shoot? You know, um, outfits, you know, would you recommend, you know, like things like that, even though a lot of times they, you know, they kind of already have that in their mind, but you know, can you guys, can you give me some example shots, you know, that you would suggest for, for, for me and my husband, future husband, speak that into existence, um, you know, uh, there, you know, what can you give me as a way to, um, you know, help me in my process, right? So that's what I would do. I would, though, between those two things, plastering yourself everywhere and then coming up with resources and doing that as well, okay? That's what I would do. So, guys, I... Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, you want to work on that. Work on that content. Um, to help people and targeting in people in your area, right, as a guide. And, um, you know, if you want to give more specific, you can, you know, target, you know, engaged couples in the state of, you know, uh, I believe you're in Ohio, right? So helping people in Ohio, um, in the state of Ohio or in, in particular, you know, um, metro area to to do that. So, guys, I want to thank you guys so much. We did an almost a two-hour training. This is crazy. We did another boss builder training. But this basically, hopefully, this is going to help you See different ways that you can market um, your business, way that you can uh, improve your sales in a service-based business. Um, again, today was phenomenal. You guys asked amazing questions. You guys stayed with me. Um, and so I pray that you guys were able to gain something. There's two things I would love for you to do after watching this. The first thing is I want you to go to Genesis Dorsey. The link is here in the graphic, but I'm just going to write it out for you. Um, Oh my goodness, three months to give back three picks. Oh no, no. <laughs> so I want you to go to jensendorsey.com backslash boss and you're gonna get access to um, a free two day training, okay? It's free. The link is actually with this video as well. So you're gonna get link, you're gonna get that. When you click on that link or you type in this, you're gonna get access to a free day training I did that's gonna help you better understand how to build your tribe. It is very important, I cannot stress this enough, to build your community. Without community, you will never build or scale your business, okay? That's just how it works. I get a tribe, I can scale. I don't have a tribe, I can't scale. And it's not about you being an expert. It's not about you being, you know, the top of the, the creme de la creme. You just have to know how to work what you know, okay? I take my, take the problem, I build the tribe, take the problem that I solve, I build my tribe off of that, and then I scale. To do what? To convert and to make money. Okay. Same thing if for people who have platforms in ministry, you know, you take the problem which you solve, you build your tribe, you scale your ministry, right? So that you can be a blessing to others and so that you can have more donors. I mean, that's just like the way it works, right? So it's not that you're focusing on making money and, you know, from people, but it's the fact that, you know, I can sell more books, I can do more events, right? Things like that. So 
Jizzdoors.com backslash boss for your two-day training. The other thing is that if you're interested in coaching, okay, there's a lot of times, um, you know, people, I get a lot of questions like, do you do coaching? I do. And that's actually what I specialize in. So I specialize in coaching programs, helping people um, really grow and scale their businesses. Now there is an investment. Okay, guys, I, I don't do things, um, you know, for free. <laughs> um, besides these kind of things, there is coaching, you will have to have an investment. And so you can go to my website, which is genesisdorsey.com. Okay, and I do monthly programs. Um, and I also do VIP. And you're going to go to dot com backslash coaching and you're going to go down, scroll down and read more. And you're going to look at there's different investment amounts. So please read those investment amounts so that you will not be, you know, like, oh, how much it costs? It says it right there on there on how much my programs are and what each one includes. I'm very specific in what each one includes and what the investments are. Um, and if you feel like, you know, you really want to invest, then there is a button where you can apply for coaching. And you, all you want to want to do is you're just going to click on that button to a class for a, to, to apply for coaching, excuse me. And and uh, you'll pick which program you want to do. And from there, we'll get you uh, on a consultation call where I'm going to call you. I'm going to talk to you more about uh, figuring out which program is best for you based upon the ones that you recommend it. And then what we'll do is we're going to get you into my schedule. We're going to get your strategy session set up. And we're going to start just to dive into your business to make sure that you are becoming the best that you can be. And again, I have coaching clients who are in MLM, who are in uh, entrepreneurship, who are in ministry, uh, who are authors, speakers, coaches. These are people who are looking to grow their tribes to scale them. Uh, I also help you make sure that your funnels are set up, that you know you have the right system in place so that you can grow. You don't have to have a lot of systems in place. You just have to have the right ones in place. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, I do not count it. Um, you know, uh, how should I say it? I don't take you guys for, for, for void. Let me say that. I, I don't take you guys for granted. Um, I really love what I do. Um, I am somebody who literally took the problem. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a product of someone who took the problem. Um, and I decided to bring a solution to the table. And from there, I was able to scale my business to create the income that I knew I can make. So on the bottom, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you. Make sure these eyes look, don't look crazy off. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And again, if you have not, um, be sure to go to the link that is with this video so that you can join in and become a boss builder yourself. And then if you want to as well, if you want to get general information from me, coaching advice, things like that, then if you go to my website, you're going to get, um, there's a top bar where you can join my email list. Um, and I can send you even more. So I got, I got the boss builders and I have my email list. So guys, thank you so much for joining in and I will see you guys for another boss builder training. If you're not on the boss builder list, then go to genesisdorsey.com backslash boss and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you guys so much. Bye.